Hi and welcome to a new video of Trading Shenzhen. I would like to show you some tricks and some really nice settings for your Vivo and Original S smartphone. Because a lot of customers from Trading Shenzhen like the Vivo devices, the IQ series, the X series. But the problem is most of the time the series doesn't come out as a global version. So you have to buy it as a Chinese version. And the Chinese version works perfectly, supports a lot of languages, but has some mannerism. And I will talk really fast to show you as much as possible. So if it's too fast, just pause the video and check the settings. We will start with the Google Play Store because the Google Play Store isn't from the beginning on this phone. So we have to install it and this is pretty easy. We open up the browser and go into the settings and type the apcarmirror.com website. There we search for the Play Store. And it's really important to search for the right place. So because there is also a Play Store for the Android TV or the Wear OS. So here at the bottom, you see the right Play Store. Click on the download link. And it is also important to search for the right version. Usually it's on the bottom. You see it as an APK version. Just click on this and you go to the next site where you can download it. When you have downloaded it, just install the version and it will be installed on your device. Usually you can work with it, but on the original OS there is one exception. You have to activate one more setting, go into the settings. Right at the bottom you will find account and sync and there you see Google Basic Service Management. You have to activate this and when this is activated you can open up the Play Store and everything works like on a normal device. The next thing is the Smart Launcher. The Smart Launcher is on the left side of the home screen and usually it's used for Google Now but here Google Now doesn't work. You can of course deactivate all the stuff but it doesn't make any sense because there is a lot of Chinese stuff in it. So we hold on the home screen, click on home screen settings and right on the bottom you see like more settings. There you see the smart launcher and we deactivate it. So the smart launcher is gone. Now it's pretty clean and you don't have so much Chinese stuff. The next thing is the control center and right now on most devices like an iPhone on the left side notification bar on the right there is a toggle center. I don't really like it. I like the old size so this is pretty easy. Go into the settings and at the buff you see system management click on control center and activate the old style so all the toggles are at the buff and under the toggles there is a notifications and when we are right here we can also change the notification bar because usually when we swipe in the middle the global search comes up and the global search is pretty useless because it's in chinese and it uses beidou as a search engine so we want to change it click on the home screen hold it on home screen settings and above you see swipe down on the home screen and there you can change it to global search or the notification center. So when you swipe now in the middle of the home screen down you get always the notification bar. Next I want to show you something about notification. Therefore we will go into the settings and there we click on the notification. Usually I show you later a little bit more about how to get all the notification but here are some tips what you can you know, adjust. The first thing is the nano alerts. I don't recommend to activate it because they are pretty useless. Then you have the home screen icon badges. It's an iPhone style, but if you don't like it, you can deactivate it. And on the bottom, you will find the most important setting is the show battery percentage. So you have it at the top. We come to the lock screen settings where I want to show you the lock screen carousel, which changes the lock screen wallpaper in respect if you lock and unlock your device. So we go into settings, lock screen, lock screen settings, lock screen poster and activate the lock screen poster. You can click, of course, the type of subscription and subscribe to your favorite lock screen and we activate the rotate wallpapers. Now, every time when you unlock and lock, the lock screen wallpaper changes. But there was one small problem, the small Chinese writing at the bottom. So we have to deactivate it. We go back into lock screen poster and there was one setting you have to activate, the phone icon. Don't know why it's called like this, but if you activate this, every time when you unlock and lock, the small Chinese writing is gone. Next we come to the window animation and this is usually a setting which you find in the developer settings where you have to activate it and this is pretty geeky. Not here in Origin OS because it's even in the settings and we go down and click here on dynamic effects. There you see the option for interface dynamic effects. 
and next we click on home screen transition and yet there you can increase the speed of the window animation so when you set it on efficient it's 0.5 which is an old developer settings 0.5 now everything looks smoother and is faster which is a really nice setting which i would recommend every time if we go to the dynamic effects we see also some other lock screen animation for example here the fingerprint reader i would you know increase it to the maximum so you see how big the fingerprint reader on an iq or an x80 pro is also the face recognition i like really the elf so you see it when the face is recognized that it's recognized it's kind of iphone style and there are more touchscreen animation ambient light charging animation you can really customize this device next we skip to the yobi assistant which is really useless because it's pretty chinese so i recommend to go all over the settings and deactivate everything you can find because you don't need the yobi assistant and it shouldn't be running in the background so go through every settings look if there are something activated and deactivated a pretty useful feature is the quick app launch bar you will find it pretty easy in the settings when you click on system navigation and at the bottom you will find the quick app launch bar where you can activate it and this is a app launch bar which is activated when you slide from the left or the right and you hold a little bit longer there you have some apps which you can customize of course and they are opened in a floating window so you can open for example the calculator and still act with the other apps when you click here on the more settings there you have an edit button and you can customize all the apps next we go to the interaction areas so it's a small app on the home screen usually when you click it you see all the areas where you can interact with the smartphone of course at the bottom you see the normal gestures which are left and right and to the middle on the top you see of course the notification bar but there is also an interaction area on the left bottom this is a small window interaction area when you have an app and you swipe from the left corner to the middle the app goes into a floating window when it's supported but for me it wasn't useful it made all the time problems with my keyboard when i used the flow style so i deactivated there was also on the right corner an interaction area where you open up the super pocket which is pretty useless as it's only for wechat and alipay and not used outside of china so i deactivated also next we go to the standard apps because there are a lot of apps on this device for example the browser which is nice but it's pretty useless because it's quite chinese and you don't want to use it so you want to use chrome or for example you want to use office for some reading documents or a different email app or a different calendar app so you want to set it that this standard apps the other apps are used as a standard apps and are open and this setting is quite tricky and hidden in the settings so we open up the settings app go down to the bottom where we see the apps and permission settings we click on it where we see now the permission management then we click on permission and go down right to the bottom where we see the default app settings there we can set up all the apps we want to have as a default browser the default music app or the default default email app but there was one exception the default home screen the system launcher where of course you can install for example here the nova launcher which we set up and go to the end of the settings and then everything is set up and it works of course but it's not set as a default launcher so when we open it up and we swipe up to the home screen we go back to the normal system launcher we have to set it as the default system launcher and this is quite tricky because you have to activate one more settings which we'll find in settings security more security settings and then you see the replay system launcher and this option is only available and can be activated when you have a vivo account which you can't really create on your device because it asks you every time for a chinese phone number so my tip is go on passport.vivo.com and where you want to register a new account create a new account accept everything and then you have to switch from register to a phone number to register with an email address then you can register your email address add it on your vivo device log in and then this setting will be available and you can activate it but this is not the end 
you have to deactivate the tap to home button to lock because if you don't activate it you swipe up on the home screen and you get always back to the normal home screen and now we have to also set the system on nova launcher as a default and nova it's here available but of course you can go into the system settings permission apps permission default app settings and set there the home screen the system launcher for the home screen on nova launcher after that everything works perfect last tip is about notification because a couple of customers told us that they're not getting every notification so go on to settings battery background power consumption management and search for the app you like then click on it and activate high background power usage so the app isn't closed in the background then go back and there was one more thing security more security settings and there you see device and app notifications search for the app you like click on it and activate all the notifications so most of the time this will help and you get all the notification from the app you like it's also important to activate notification just click on the app icon on app info go into notification and activate the notifications and of course you can activate all the modes for the home screen for the lock screen and then usually it should show up and finally we want to kill and delete all the bloatware so we have to activate the developer settings and debug mode so we go into settings system management we click on about phone there we go down a little bit on version info and we click a lot of time on software version then we activate the developer settings we go back and there we will see down on the bottom the developer options we activate of course the developer options and a little bit more down we activate the usb debugging option this is really important and now we need an app on the pc sadly it's only available for windows you will find it on adbappcontrol.com also down in the description a link to this website then just install it set it up and when you start it you can connect the usb to your smartphone and you get usually a message on your smartphone allowing usb debugging to control your device just allow it for every time click on the check mark and then on the next setting it will ask to install an app it's called ac bridge it's installed and when everything is fine you will see all the apps which are on your device but don't be afraid to uninstall some apps of course when you uninstall you can back up the apps and restore it afterwards and if you uninstall some app which was really useful of course when you restore the whole device everything is set back to like it was before you can of course filter the apps on the top on for system apps or user apps my recommendation uninstall most of the user apps don't uninstall ac bridge but most of the user apps which are not needed can be uninstalled and this is pretty easy just choose the apps you want to uninstall click on the right side on select and choose uninstall now approve it you can of course make a backup to restore it later or just leave it like this and there you see the apps are uninstalled five or five apps are, have been uninstalled and it's ready of course you can uninstall also system apps which are not needed for example if you use a different browser you don't need the system browser if you use a different email app you can uninstall a different email app you can uninstall some widgets or most of the vivo stuff for example the app store or the game center which is also pretty chinese the iReader and so on just look for the apps on the device which are not needed but most important the vivo pm this is a power management tool which maybe blocks some notification here in this example it's already uninstalled search for vivo point pm and uninstall the vivo power management app also like it was before clicking on uninstall uninstall and ready this is a really nice and easy way to make your device clean i hope you liked all the settings and tricks and your device is now really clean and if you have some questions just leave us a comment and if you liked it give us a thumbs up thanks your trading shenzhen